but I do want to talk Connor Bradley before then, Chloe. And it's just he was class. I really did. Every minute he plays for us, and look, this is now, it's still a small sample size, let's be clear on this, but he, he's getting stronger as games go on as well. It's not like he's just keeping his head above water and then, you know, he's getting late in the game and then he's going, what? Well, he, there was there was things in that second half, and it was pivotal to Liverpool continue their dominance. He was he's like he's running twenty thirty yards up the pitch and getting his foot in ahead of them ahead of their men and kickstarting counter attacks. I just thought he was great. Yeah, he's been superb when he's been called upon. I absolutely love how much he backs himself, no matter who he's up against. Uh, the when obviously we did the little huddle before kickoff, he comes over to our side because he's playing on the right, and the reception he gets and he gives us it back. You know, he he looks at us, he gives it a, a, a little bit, um, and you can just tell he 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 knows what it means to play for us. He's loving it, um, and he was superb once again defensively. He was really solid. Ibu Kanate played ph- phenomenally as well, which you know that's crucial being on that right hand side with a youngster. Um, but going forward. Am I? Does he get the assist for Jota? Yeah, does that assist, that officially yeah. count? Because what does it? Ball... No, I gave it to Jota. <laughs> you can't assist yourself. You can't. He did. Oh, <laughs> well, he, okay. Either way, I'll give it a mic. Well, either he way, asked, didn't he asked. You've seen that. Yeah, when he was boss. Look. Well, Conor Bradley's ball first time. By the way, to Jota. Maybe we should give the assist to the Bournemouth fans. Maybe, Wee. yeah. Wee. Yeah. <laughs> I um, watched it back. Oh, it's so it funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It they like weigh when he misses the yeah. first one. Ah, so he misses it and they all go, way, and then he slots it in the back of the net. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, back to Conor Bradley on the front foot, stepping in, reads the game really well. That's why he's so good at stepping in front of the man and winning the ball first. And he, he starts counter attacks, he starts the high press from the ball up the pitch. Um, and yeah, he's. I mean, he, he he looks shattered all the time, pretty much in the second half. But yeah, he just gets every ounce out of him himself. And yeah, what a superb performance! What what can you say? Like he's a young lad who stepped in for Trent Alexander Arnold, yeah. and like it's like, of course we miss Trent, but like it's not like anyone stood there thinking we need him back in that position straight away. Yeah. It's like he's just he's just mopping up when needed. I'll come to you in a second, Dan, but just some comments on this uh, from YouTube. Uh, Liam Benton with the Super Chess says, shout out Connor Bradley uh, already with more Premier League assists than Anthony. <sighs> okay, yeah, he has to. I, I, give it, I take the assist yeah. off <laughs> Diogo Jota and give it to Bradley now. Much like Anthony going to spin on that. And come yeah, 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 four times. Uh, Josh Owens says, Bradley was outstanding, could definitely play him against the bottom half teams and get Trent in midfield. Oh, there you go. Uh, and Ooh, that's maybe what Wood I was alluding to. Says, but. love Connor Bradley, long may continue. But it goes to show that obviously we were all a little, we all have our concerns at the end of every summer transfer window of like, have we got enough in certain positions? And I just, I felt at the time it was a little skewed by the injuries to Connor Bradley. And it's it's hard to kind of go to, again, go to back up to the wall to say, we're all right because we've got Connor Bradley, who was a lad who'd done a season on loan at Bolton Ooh, uh, wow. and currently had a back injury, you know, yeah. and, you, and you're thinking, okay, well, yeah, that, that, that wasn't one that I was, it wasn't a hill I was going to die on in, in a big way in the summer, but it did show a little bit, you know, we've seen it now with, um, with Bobby Clark coming back as well, and obviously Gerald Quantz is the headline example of this, that there's some absolutely stellar depth at the football club, even though Beck comes on and looks quite lively yeah. you know, yeah. at the back end of the game, that perhaps our squad depth is a little better than maybe we'd feared, you know, in, in, in the depths of misery in the summer. Yeah, 100% it is. And I think we owe a lot to the academy and, and their pathway for that, to be honest with you. I think it's been an absolute revelation, certainly this season. Jürgen Klopp's use of these lads and the development has been outstanding as well. I think the, the, the bench and the kids have really sort of served as well at times this season so far. I mean, it's been nice to have Europa League to fall back on and allow them to get some minutes and some first team exposure too. But yeah, I think as for Conor Bradley, yet another outstanding performance. I think he was helped by Canate alongside him, who was brilliant as well. But I think even Harvey Elliott yeah, was, sort of yeah. getting back and helping double up on his man. And likewise, Curtis Jones and Joe Gomez on the other side. I think that as a defensive unit, it was a really good performance yesterday because Bournemouth had moments, but just kept getting shut down essentially by those lads I'm talking about. But yeah, 
I think Connor Bradley is just another example of Liverpool's academy getting it right. And you mentioned the loan move. It's no great surprise to me that what we're talking about in terms of Bradley, defensively solid, puts every single ounce of effort in. But from an attacking point of view and his reading of the game, that stems from having a very attacking influence. He was player of the season last year at Bolton, yep. won a trophy, and he was essentially playing as a right winger for a lot of that. So he likes to get forward. He's not shy about getting forward, which suits this Liverpool side absolutely perfectly. It, yeah. The the Europa League thing's interesting because in Quantas, uh, Quantas is an example. It's a great sort of proven ground for some of these players, but yeah. Bradley hasn't benefited from that at all, Chris, because he's been he's injured. Them all. He was injured. So yeah. he's you know he's just coming, he comes off the bench in the FA Cup against Arsenal, plays the full ninety, looks dead on his feet against Fulham, and then he's had a little winter break and he's come back, and it's just it's just really encouraging. And I thought the comment earlier was interesting. It's still early, very early to be to be unequivocally saying this, but. I, if he plays like this and he can play at this level and, and more, then I do think it facilitates a conversation around what you do with Trent. Because if you can trust someone to play that job, and look, don't bear in mind when Andy Robertson's back, Gomez will go back into that equation as well. But that does help because if he's good enough and Gomez can do that and we've got left backs, then you. You, you don't need Trent to be a right back. Well, yeah, and uh, but ultimately, let's not forget that Gomez might get himself back into the centre half equation yes. as well as being the right yeah. back cover. But before I sort of answer that, I just want to sort of talk on something what Dan was saying there because I think when you think of the impact that Bacetic had last season coming in through the academy, mm -hmm. Kwanzaa this season as well, Connor Bradley, Kate Jones, Harvey Elliott, let's not forget these are essentially academy products as well. This is something where when you when you see Conor Bradley and the performances that he's put down, you understand he's been at the football club for near five years. Yeah. And he's watched Trent play right back for near five years. So he understands what Liverpool want from a right back. And it's sort of it's everyone throughout the club and the pyramid of the club pulling in the same direction, wanting the same things from these players. Because Harvey Elliott and Kurt Jones are absolutely but they understand what everybody needs around them. And Harvey Elliott, you referenced it back helping out Connor Bradley. So there is a real sort of uptick in the in the form of the place. Think of that run that Owen Beck has late on, yeah. where he drives into the middle. That's as Andy Robertson a run from left back <laughs> as you're going to see from anyone not named Andy Robertson. Yes. But it was exactly what he did. You know, Bobby Clark bang down the wing, running at one point and then keeping the ball and, and stuff so these academy lads know what, what Liverpool want from their players and Klopp's doing a brilliant job in, in giving them those opportunities and you know Bradley now I think personally I think it's too soon mm -hmm. to be talking about Trent in midfield because yeah. of him especially when we do have the options in midfield but my words like next season I'm probably not looking to loan him out Mm -hmm. That's what, that's already yeah. what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Why would you want to loan them out? Well, it just it changes the dynamic of what your transfer approach is, Chloe, because you, you know we've talked about the, the six positions, and you know McAllister has a really good game. We'll talk about him next. And those really started to flourish prior to going to the to the Asia Cup. And obviously, we looked at like how do you solve certain problems in the squad? Well, look, the ideal will, and it's not a sexy solution because the sexy solution is to go out and spend loads of money on footballers. But actually, if you've got a really good right back, really good right backs in your squad, and you've got really good people who can be moved to play in the six. Then, well, yeah, maybe we can spend some of that money on on some more fanciful players, you know, more attackers or whatever, whatever else. It just gives Liverpool more breathing room, more freedom of choice of what they do next. Yeah, it does, and it also means you know that extra, you know, 10, 15 mil that you had to spend on a potential new right back, new DM that can now be put in a pot for the centre-back that you've been chasing. And that's the big thing. There are other areas in this squad which are much more needed to look at. You know, we've been going on about left-sided, left-footed centre-offs. Um, and, and there's other, you know, there might be a situation with Lewis Diaz again where there's another player where Egan Klopp's wants him and he's liked him for ages. And it might not be the player we need right now, but it might be the player we need in a year or a year and a half. And you kind of want that person to have the breathing space and someone else might try and take them and it just means we've got the money there in the bank to go and do that um so yeah it's it, you know these academy players coming through and being at the moment good squad footballers and potentially in the future being our number ones in a start and 11 it, it only breeds more excitement for Liverpool because not just have we got these talents it also means we've got extra funds that we would have had to spend on them to go and really go and develop and um, you know target the areas that we really want to improve on most yeah, and we've done it sorry we've done it with you know we've done it with Nico Williams yeah, yeah. Like, we brought him through essentially didn't we and then we got good money for him we didn't want to sit behind Trent you might not get a chance where 
Trent might be the right back for the next 10 years mm -hmm. and Conor Bradley moves on but if it fills the coffers up and there's another lad in the yeah. line who can take the number two spot we don't want to be spending 12 million on Costas Timakas to sit behind Andy Robertson and you know I think now the academy's got the players where you don't need to spend 12 million Absolutely, on Costas yeah. well it goes back to that persistent point of like don't buy squad players buy players who are yeah. better than your first 11 because you should your youth players should be your squad players that's yeah. what you know all the players who've been pushed down the back in order to buy better what it does Dan is that Conor Bradley potentially just eases the pressure on Joe Gomez because mm -hmm. I think this is the issue we've had we know what his injury problems have been over the years we know what the injury problems of Canate have been over the years Matip's already ruled out for the rest of the season if not you know beyond certainly you know obviously with his contract coming up. Um, Bradley there just means that, yeah, Joe, we don't need, it's not, because we've got depth, but our depth is a little bit sort of damocles hanging by a, by the thread of Gomez's fitness because he's so versatile. Bradley just means that, yeah, we can afford to go. There'll be games where we don't have to play Joe Gomez is kind of what I'm what I'm. No, absolutely, at. mate. Yeah, and one of them could be coming up on the weekend, maybe not in midweek necessarily, but the Norwich game might look a little bit like that. But you're right, essentially, our depth goes as far as Joe Gomez in so much as he's the right-back cover, the centre-back cover and the left-back cover. Yeah. So, yeah, Conor Bradley eases the burden substantially on Joe Gomez or by use of Joe Gomez, which is massive because, as Chris references before, there could come a time in the coming weeks whereby we might need Gomez to do a little stint at centre half if he knows what that looks like anymore by the way it feels like forever since I've seen him play centre back but yeah it, Conor Badley's emergence and what's another interesting point on this is we signed a lad a little bit older than Conor mm. Badley who felt like he was going to be number two in Calvin Ramsey and Conor Badley has usurped Calvin Ramsey now in this pecking order for yeah. me and his performances warrant that and what happens with Ramsey next remains to be seen really but credit to Bradley for that in the first instance and just to finish on the academy as well if what I've seen on Saturday night is anything to go yeah. by Liverpool's academy is in a very good state of play because we absolutely demolished Arsenal 7-1 and Jaden Dans Lewis Kumas Trent Cohen Doherty Trey and Yoni as well by the way 16 my god we are in good, safe hands for a while, yeah. Amazing. What do you think of Conor Bradley? Let us know in the comments um, underneath. Very, very exciting start, uh, and certainly this season.